There we go. Fab. So, yeah, welcome to our Discovery College webinar. Um, we are with you here till around 12 o'clock um, or a bit earlier, depending on how many questions we have. Um, so, like I said, this is the, the first webinar we're introducing um, our brand new Discovery College branch, um, which, if you aren't aware, is part of the Recovery College um, run by NSFT. Um, so we're going to go through today, essentially, what you can expect when you come to courses or webinars with Discovery College. Um, and there will be lots of opportunity to ask questions um, and we'll, we'll go through how to do that as well. Um, fab. So um, just to start off with, we are going to talk a bit more about our roles um, in a bit. But my name is Hope um, and I'm the practitioner tutor uh, for Discovery College. Um, and we have Jake with us. Awesome. Thank you, Hope. Um, yeah, so my name is Jake and I'm a peer tutor with the Recovery College. So in this morning's session, I'll be facilitating with Hope. Um, just going through this session we've got planned, like we said, this is the first one. This is the introduction to the Discovery College. Um, I'm unsure as to whether you will be aware of the Recovery College and what we do um, and the roles in which we have. Um, but the Discovery College is a new adaptation of that that we have developed, um, specifically aimed at people within the 16 to 25 year old mark. Um, so trying to get out there and trying to help um, and affect like, a younger demographic and audience that maybe we don't get potentially as much of within the recovery college. Um, as I said, my name is Jake, I'm a peer tutor. Um, so I myself was a service user and a student at the recovery college for a number of years before um, going through the process and the journey, I guess, into the role I have now. Um, and my involvement within the team. Um, but like Hope said, we have uh, a couple of slides later on in the session where we go a little bit more in depth in within our roles and, and what that brings and stuff like that uh, and what that can entail. So um, I'll keep it brief for now, but we will go into a bit more detail of that in a little while. Definitely, thank you. So we've got a bit about how the webinar works, which Jake is just going to talk about. Yeah, us. everyone. So tech side of things. Um, again, for those of you, some of you may be aware, uh, maybe you're, you're not as aware in general. So how does a webinar work? Um, obviously, this is a live online event. Um, the perks of a webinar that a lot of people are um, quite, quite pleased about and, and find a lot easier compared to like a Zoom or a face-to-face -face classroom session is the fact that we can't see or hear you at any point throughout this session. Um, you should only be able to see the slides on screen that Hope is kindly popping up for us. Um, and then myself and Hope on your screen as well in terms of seeing us and hearing us. Um, you have the unmute and the start video function at the bottom, but those are irrelevant to you anyway, because like I said, it is a webinar. Um, the raise hand function you can see on the bottom left of your screen, hopefully. Um, we don't really need that involvement today either, because like I said, we can't really see you guys. Um, and in terms of the amount of participants we have today, um, yourselves, the students, um, it'll be relatively easy to see in terms of your involvement, like via the Q&A and stuff like that. So you can see on your screen as well, um, the massive welcome to the Q&A box. Um, we have a Q&A function you'll find on the feature bar at the bottom and a chat function as well. Um, we ask kindly that we don't use the chat function today, guys. We'll just communicate via the Q&A, just because it makes it a little bit easier for myself or Hope to um, sift through any questions, um, answers, comments, opinions, um, anything you guys want to put through the chat. Um, and as you can see as well, there is a send anonymously box. So Hope has already kindly changed everyone to a first name basis if you did have your last name up there. Um, but do please tick that box when you send any questions in um, and you only have to press it the once and you will come up anonymous for the remainder of the session. So if that's something that appeals to you, um, you don't want us to know or or other students to know um, what your name is and stuff in in the context of it being attached to your question, because they will be remain visible on that Q&A tab. Please do that if that appeals to you. Um, before we move on as well, just in case anyone is on something that isn't a laptop, myself and Hope will be on a laptop computer, vice versa. Um, so we use our cursor and we have the little function bar at the bottom. If you're potentially on an iPad or a tablet in general or a phone, um, I'm aware you might have to tap your screen or swipe in a direction um, to access those functions. So if that is something that you're using, um, please do just have a little play around with that and see and work it out for yourself if you aren't already aware of that in the first place. Um, so yeah, that's how the webinar works. And again, same as what we said about with the 
like the welcomings and stuff like that. There is another slide later on uh, when we go through what we're offering at Discovery College in terms of courses and stuff on our timetable. Um, there is another slide where we go through the differences between both and stuff a little bit more in depth as well. So that's just a brief little introduction in terms of getting you all comfortable for that. Yeah, thank you, Jake. Um, we're now going to talk through um, group agreements. Do you want to kick us off? Of course. So a group agreement, guys. Um, this is a little bit briefer than the average group agreement you'd get within some of our courses, but only for the purpose that this is a webinar. OK, so in terms of the fact that we can't see or hear you um, and you can't see or hear each other, there's certain things on the group agreement that um, aren't as important within the fact that this is a webinar session. OK, so um, this is going to be quite brief in other courses um, on Zoom in particular. Um, you'll probably get a little bit more of an in-depth one, one that you guys, like I said, may be aware of if you've been with us previously at the Recovery College. So first up, we've got confidentiality. Um, obviously, what stayed within this session, or what's said within this session, sorry, will stay within this session. Once the session's finished, you haven't got to worry about myself and Hope talking about anything that was discussed, any opinions or questions or experiences that were shared via yourselves. Um, next up, we've got respect. Um, should go without saying, obviously, we, we aim to have a respectful environment here. We hope others respect each other. Um, don't be non uh, be non judgmental. Sorry. Um, understand we're all here for a similar reason in terms of developing and growing um, within the aspect of our recovery. Um, one of my personal favorites, um, the mindful sharing one. So please do be mindful of what you're sharing, not only for yourself. Um, obviously, once you put something out there, it can't be taken back. So please do be mindful and also comfortable with what you're putting out there. But also as well, try and be mindful about the impact it may have on others, what you say. Um, so please do be careful in regards to that. But I'm sure everyone will be amazing with it. We never usually have any dramas at all. And then lastly, just breaks. Um, so... This isn't in terms of we will all pause to have a break because, like I said, we're only here till 12 anyway. Um, quite confident we might finish a little bit before 12 also. But in terms of if at any point you feel as a student, you might need a break. Um, and for whatever reason that may be, maybe you just need a bit, um, a couple minutes, five minutes, um, that, which is absolutely fine. Like I said, you have the Q&A function as well. So if you need to message myself or Hope and let us know you're just popping away for a couple of minutes, by all means. If you get a knock on the door and there's the postman, a parcel you're waiting for, a phone call that's really important for a meeting or or whoever it might be, um, by all means, you're absolutely entitled to take those calls and, and take those couple of minutes and stuff like that as well. So that's just the group uh, agreement, guys. Just a light little introduction to some of the things we expect and, and hope for throughout this session. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and this is something obviously we come to in, in every session that we do. Um, and when we're usually in like a course rather than a webinar um we will ask students if there's anything they don't agree with or they want to change the wording of or want to add to the agreement as well so um yeah when you come to courses you can expect that to come up um we just thought it'd be nice to have a a, a short one for this session as well yeah. thank you jake um Ab, so um do you want content. to run us through where, what we're doing today? Yeah, so the content for today's session, guys, um, we, we looked at what is a webinar. We've also just run through the group agreement. Um, next up, we're going to look at who are we? So who are we and what do we do? Um, then we're going to look at what is the Discovery College? Obviously, like Hope said, this is, um, this is a new thing that has been designed um, and put out there. This is the first actual session of the Discovery College in terms of the introduction. So um inviting people to to have this session to sort of make them aware and let them know of, of who we are what we plan on doing what you can expect from us um and and different things like that in terms of what may appeal to you and what might suit you guys um next up we're going to look at our hopes not the hopes i'm facilitating with but the hope in general um we're going to look at what happens when you attend um the discovery college calendar so we're going to let you know about what we've got upcoming courses we've got on the timetable um a few things like that so you're all fully aware and, and where you can find all this information and stuff as well outside of these sessions and then lastly we're, we're going to open up for questions so in, in regards to questions in general at any point throughout this session um, if you have anything you want to ask any advice any opinions any worries whatever it may be you have myself and hope here until 12 o'clock latest so if you want to ask anything absolutely fire away pop something in the q a 
um, and ask us and I'm sure between us we can answer your question. Um, if not, when we get to the end, we will open it up for you all so that if there is any questions you have, you can just fire away uh, and we'll be more than happy to answer them to the best of our ability. So, Jake, um, yeah, so um, we want to talk about our team, who we are. Um, and uh, funnily enough, we don't have photos of everyone at the moment. So what we have got is some um, some animals which uh, I guess represent each of us. Um, so we have um, myself, Hope, the practitioner tutor. Um, and essentially what this means is um, I'm someone who has clinical experience working with people aged 16 to 25 with their mental health. Um, so I've, I've worked in mental health for many years now um, and my previous role was with young people in schools um, and um, my role essentially is to develop the courses, um, liaise with other people working with young people um, about uh, what courses they would like, whether they want to help um, tutor our courses as well. Um, so it might be that you see um, some other clinicians in the future um, kind of presenting these courses as well. Uh, that's definitely something that we're looking forward to opening up to more people. Um, and then we have Danny and Jake, who are our peer and learning support advisors. Jake, do you want to go a bit through your role? Absolutely, yeah. So as Hope just alluded to with, with her role um, as a practitioner tutor, um, obviously I've already slightly referred to it in regards to um, the, the balance we have at Recovery College. So if, whether it's Recovery College or the newly started Discovery College, like we're, we're facilitating through now, um, you'll always have the balance of a practitioner tutor like Hope um, with a, a more learned experience, a clinical background potentially. Um, and then someone like myself or Danny, who will be helping facilitate some of these sessions as well um, with the, the peer background. So my background um, is of lived experience. So like I alluded to at the start of the session during the introductions, um, I've been a service user um, for a number of years from about 18 to maybe 23, 24, something like that. So I've, I've not been within services for a couple of years. Um, I've been a student at Recovery College myself as well for a number of years before I moved on to my role now. Um, and basically that what that means within my role now is a as a peer tutor, I have my own lived experience. So so my aim and my role within the team really is to use my experiences um, to help explain and to help inspire and, and benefit people like yourselves, like you students, um, in terms of what I've experienced and what I've I've seen and stuff, whether that's from the aspect of services or being a student itself. Um, obviously, you can see my role is peer and learning support advisor. So I take part in the co-production and co-delivery of courses. Um, I take part in the reviewing of courses and changing of material potentially. Um, and the learning support advisor bit is a new bit within our role um, that's only come in within the last few months, which is in regards to individual learning plans, which we offer for every student um, and also course choice calls as well. So in regards that you can get in contact with us uh, and we can help you look at the timetable, look at what courses may appeal to you um, and sort of help you point yourself in that direction of what potentially stands out to you and what you would like to do um so for every course we have um you'll have someone like myself or hope um like facilitating them both together um, and we find within the college and within the team that that just sets a really nice balance because you get a little bit of the best of both worlds you know um so and then lastly i'll just add on as well um obviously you can see the tiger there the volunteer ones um and i will just mention i feel like i have got the short straw in terms of the animals everyone um, <laughs> i feel like the koala or the tiger would have been my go-to's but I won't complain. I'll be happy with a little chameleon. Um, but yeah, so we are also looking for volunteers. Um, obviously, within the age bracket of 16 to 25, um, we are looking for some volunteers um, to help out and get involved in, in terms of the material we're doing and, and potentially facilitating and things like that in the future. So if that is something that appeals to anyone, please do get in contact with us, a recovery college online uh, email address um, and then that'll get passed through to, to hope most probably or myself or someone like that um, and then we can go through the process of speaking to you about that if that is something that suits you um, yeah so if that is do get in contact let us know 
<laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We we really value having um kind of more volunteers within our service just because whilst we have our kind of paid peer and learning support advisors, um, they are limited on how many hours they can work and um their experience that they can offer as well um and as discovery college is so new um we do want to have um you know a bigger range of ages as well volunteering with us um so you'll get lots of support in terms of um how to deliver courses what's expected of you training and things like that um so you won't just be thrown in at the deep end um but yeah of course if anyone's interested in that then do get in contact with us via our email on the website no. um but yeah it's it's such a lovely um opportunity for us to be able to have so much experience uh in a team when we deliver courses and it really does bring it together um so hopefully that's something you'll see when you attend you know this webinar and other courses that we put on as well and the lovely thing is as well we all bring different things to the courses so if you attended a discovery college course um and for example there wasn't a um a course that recovery college deliver and you went to one there um you would have a different practitioner and a different peer and you'd have a totally different experience um because everyone in our team is so diverse so it's it's really worth um going going to different courses to to meet the different members of the wider team as well at recovery college uh if you feel able to um yeah. so moving on we want to give a bit of an overview, just really nailing down what is D Discovery College if you're unsure. So um, essentially, it's free educational courses and webinars like today um, on mental health topics. Uh, it's provided by NSFT's Recovery College and it's for people aged 16 to 25 years old. Um, so it's a lot of our courses. Um, the people on the courses will be 16 to 25. Um, for the purpose of today's webinar, um, to introduce Discovery College, we are um, open opening it up to anyone of any age, as we understand carers and um, people working with young people um, need to know about it as well. Um, but generally, our courses are exclusively for 16 to 25. Um, but we are looking in the future to put on courses for carers and professionals too. Um, and this is really just to create that kind of safe environment where um, people of that age can feel um, they can open up and um, really have that relevant um, shared learning environment because that's sometimes, you know, there's, that's not going to happen um, if the people in the room have such different um, experiences. Mm -hmm. So um, that's met the main part of our offer. And um, people who attend our sessions are referred to as students. So if you hear us say students, we mean you. <laughs> um, that's just what, what we like to call people. Um, as you know, we, we, we try to um, make this an education environment rather than um, a therapeutic environment. Um, bec just because um, the therapeutic element would be necessary in a more one-to-one -one setting or if you're with someone like a care coordinator or or other professional and um, this is more of a place where we can come together and learn together as opposed to um you know going into the deep dark depths of of things that have happened to us um we love people sharing stuff in our sessions um but as we go through hopefully you'll see you know how jake shares things and um and we'll kind of guide everyone on on how much to share and when to share and things like that. So you can't get it wrong. Um, and we're more than happy to talk to you if you ever feel like, um, you know, something you've shared, um, you then feel uncomfortable about, then please do um, let us know. Um, the great thing about um, our courses is that you can attend as many times as you want. Um, so if you come to today and you're just a bit overwhelmed and you want to come back to this, um, you're more than welcome. Same with all of our other courses. Um, and also there's no professional referral needed. Um, I mean, often a lot of people hear about Discovery College and um, the wider Recovery College through 
they're a professional they're in touch with um but you don't need them to um attend which is really great because it means the ball is in your court you can do as much or as little as you want um which i've gone on to say here you know you can just attend webinars where your camera mic is off um if you do choose to attend our courses um then camera mic is still voluntary we we do like people to use them because it's nice to connect um but it's always what you feel most comfortable with um we do have the option of supporting us through focus groups as well so as we're developing we really want lots of input from people aged 16 to 25 so um if that's something you're interested in we're going to be putting a link to sign up to that later on um things at the focus group will look at um, you know, trialing activities that we're doing in sessions, helping us design stuff, um, look at how we're wording things. Is it um, helpful or does it interest you how we've worded things? Stuff like that. Um, and we do like to get creative in them too. So um, they are they are quite fun. Um, and also, if like we said before, if you wanted to um, volunteer with us to support delivering courses, then you can let us know um, your interest by emailing and getting in touch with us about that. Um, so, you know, you can make as much or as um, little engagement with Discovery College as you want. It's completely your choice. Um, is there anything you wanted to add on here, Jake, that I've missed? Um, no, I think you've done a really nice job with that, Hope. All I would mm -hmm. just add is um, in regards to the freedom you all have as students um please please do make the most of that so in regards to attending webinars or zoom whatever it is that uh, might appeal to you um one of the perks and most biggest benefits of webinars is that they're a really nice place to start at with recovery college or discovery college if you are a new student like hope said you have no expectation of having your camera on having your microphone on and and have an involvement other than via the Q&A. Um, so for some people, that's a really nice way to start and, and get introduced to the sessions and, and how they work, how it comes across as being facilitated in the involvement you have and, you know, things like that. So, you know, I would always say that that's a really nice starting point for students. Um, and then depending on what other things you like to sign up with, um, how you're finding the courses and things like that, you know, like Hope said, move move on um, to the Zoom ones and stuff because we offer a little bit more on Zoom. Um, and, you know, it's always nice to, to have your camera off, have your microphone off um, mm. and then or on, sorry, and then just start in, getting involved and, you know, sharing your experiences, um, asking questions. Um, having conversations with other students and things like that the aspect of shared learning within the discovery college and the recovery college um is is such a catalyst for for growth and development and things you know from my experience of when i was a student myself i think i learned just as much from other students as well than i did just the peers or the practitioner tutors you know so that's a really good one um and obviously like hope said we've got the focus groups that will help you will help support you in um and then the volunteering to support delivering courses as well. You know, um, I, I volunteered for a period before I, I got into the role I'm in now and stuff like that. Um, it's it's not as severe as it might come across within that. We don't just chuck you in the deep end and expect you to start facilitating sessions like myself and Hope are now. Um, you know, there'll be opportunities to shadow and to learn the material and you'll have the support from myself and Hope and other people within our team and stuff as well. So obviously if that is something that appeals to you, uh, and something you would like to do um like i said at the start of the session by all means get in contact with us just speak to one of us uh, members of staff whether it's myself or hope or someone else um and you know we can point you in the right direction speak to you about any worries or any anxieties you might have and things like that um and it's it's a it's a really nice option to, to do um so yeah but other than that no i think it's all been covered bad thank you yeah um Great. And that leads us on nicely to kind of the hopes for Discovery College. And this is something that um, I really want to have more input in from students, you know, maybe rewording this, um, shaping it a bit more. But this is what we've kind of decided to um, put forward as the hopes for Discovery College and what we what we want to achieve, essentially. Um, we, we really want to provide a space for you to feel safe and heard. Because that is something time and time again I've heard from from young people is that they don't feel like they have that um, and would really love for Discovery College to be a place where where that is is a big part of it. Um, 
we want to create a shared learning environment, which Jake kind of mentioned before. Um, shared learning is so important because sometimes, especially with mental health, on our own, we can we can really struggle with finding a way forward. So actually sharing our learning um, and getting stuff from each other is so valuable. Um, and that goes both ways, like Jake said as well. We learn from you just as much as you learn from us in these sessions. Um, we really want to inspire independence in your progress with your mental health as well. Um, it can feel really daunting to, um, you know, work on things or start something new, even like coming to today's session. Um, but actually, independence is a really big part of taking char charge of your mental health. Um, so we hope that's something that that can be gained from coming as well. Um, and lastly, we really want to empower people through a choice. So as we said before, everything you do at Discovery College would always be your choice. What courses you go to, how much engagement you have, whether you stay the whole courses, whether you attend them multiple times, um, you know, the power really is in your hands um, and you can take as much or little as you want from the sessions. Um, so there's there's never any any pressure from us um, in terms of you making decisions about what you do here, um, which we really hope comes across. Um, I wonder, um, you know, if there's there's anything on here that you have experienced with just from your time, um, I guess, with Recovery College, Jake. Yeah, so obviously before we move on to the next slide, I think this is a nice point for me to sort of give some experience and some some background as to, like Hope said about this is in terms of our aims, um, I think it'd be nice to speak about how I've experienced these from the perspective of when I was a student. Um, so mm -hmm. in regards to providing a safe place for you to feel safe and, and heard, um, that was always something I felt as a student. Um, I've done a number of courses, um, quite a few actually within the space of a, a year or two um and i had the probably the anxieties that some of you students may feel of in, in regards to beforehand of a course um you know uh the word college at first potentially put me off in the slight because i thought oh maybe i'm going to be like quite an older person at, at these sessions maybe you know people might be a little bit younger or um you, you know so i had i had these sort of anxieties and these um these thoughts beforehand um, of the fact that I thought I was kind of getting out of my comfort zone or whatever it might have been. Um, and in reality, what I experienced on my first ever session was that I was surrounded by different types of people from different walks of life, whether that's due to different ages or different backgrounds, cultures, beliefs, opinions, environments, whatever it may have been. Um, but I've only ever met amazing people and I've only ever shared, um, you know, experiences and opinions with others as well. And the relatability in things um, was such a catalyst and a key to change for me in my recovery in the, in regards to the fact that there was a period when I first started at recovery college where I very much felt alone um, and that not many people could relate to my experiences or or understand and make sense of how I was feeling and and potentially the why as to why I was feeling. Um, and that now goes on to the shared learning environment of that. Um, like I said, one of the biggest things for me and one of my favourite benefits from being a student was the fact of meeting other people from different walks of life, but being able to share these experiences and to make sense of the fact that I, I am not alone and other people do understand how I feel because they feel it themselves, you know, and that was a real big thing for me. Um, and it, it started that recovery journey of mine and it really inspired hope within me that things could get better and you know, that I was in a perfect environment to learn and to develop and to learn different techniques to help me manage and things like that. So that's a really important bit of context as to how the recovery college or the discovery college works. Um, and then with the last two, the inspiring independence in your progress and empowering through choice, that has always been and will always be an option and how we run things here. Um, obviously, we're here to help as much as we possibly can and as much as you need from us. So in regards to helping you decide what courses you might want to do or helping you decide on the amount you want to do. You know, obviously everyone's different. Everyone individually um, is unique in regards to the, the way in which they learn and process information and, and the amount they're willing to or are capable of doing. So what I mean by that is, you know, you're open to deciding what courses that we can offer on the timetable appeal to you. 
Um, is it a course you actually feel like is a benefit to you? You know, some courses may not be as important to you where you're at in your recovery because maybe some of them aren't a potential as big an issue as, as other ones, you know? So my experience of that was, I can remember having a meeting with a member of staff we still work with today. Um, and and that was the context from the absolute get-go. Um, you have full reign on what you want to do, how much you want to do. Um, we will just help you decide. We will just pinpoint you in a direction of what we feel would benefit you potentially off what you have told us. So help you decide, you know, um, and via through that, um, you know, hopefully we empower you guys. We empower you to to book onto courses and to, to learn and develop and grow as people and, and grow within your recovery and things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's just from the perspective of a student. Um, and these are all things I've experienced from a student. And, you know, now I'm in this role of as a peer, um, I try my absolute best to to sometimes keep my student hat on, so to speak, and um, remind myself of what it was that I really appreciated and what benefited me when I was a student um, and try my best to still involve that and include it when I'm facilitating sessions like I am now with Hope. Amazing. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, it's really, really helpful just to have that kind of perspective of how these things are actually put into place in our sessions. Um, and hopefully that that will really come across when people um you know are attending more of our courses and things like that fab so jake i'll let you take this one okay yeah everyone so um i'm going to start off by reading what's on the slide that you should hopefully be all be, all be able to see um this is the recovery college defi definition of recovery so um this is something that we have in, in it's in probably most of our courses you know depending on what the material is and the topic we're looking at and stuff but this um is our definition of recovery and then i'm just going to spend a couple of minutes talking about how i perceive recovery um so as you can see on the screen recovery is finding a way to live a meaningful and valued life with or without symptoms um I don't know about you guys, but how that makes you feel, whether you can relate to that or not. Um, please do use the Q&A and jump in and let us know. Um, is that is that something suitable? Do you do you like that? Is that something you feel like, you know, that is that does make sense? Yeah, that is how I view recovery. Um, what I would add to that, though, is that something, again, me and Hope have mentioned before in, in regards to choosing your um, courses and things you want to do and stuff. Uh, recovery is and always will be completely individual and unique to the person that is that is living that recovery. You know, ultimately, we are all the drivers of our own recovery. Um, so as much as I love that definition, and I love that from in, in a, regards to a quote, um, me, for me, recovery, um, I, I liken it to a journey. Um, and the reason I do that is because I've, I had it explained to me and described to me that way once when I was a student at Recovery College, that um, recovery is like a journey in regards to the word recovery being quite a, a slippery and easily misread word in that there's a potential hope that you're going to get to a point where maybe you're fully recovered. And I, I, I use that term loosely because there was certainly a point when, when I first started this journey of recovery myself and things were most overwhelming that I really hoped that I'd get to a point of feeling and behaving like I did before any of this was really a major issue to me, I guess. Um, and it wasn't until that realisation and acceptance and, and the conversation I had with someone when I was a student and how they explained it to me in their sense that it really clicked and, and, and made sense to me. And I, I found it so relatable. And, and the idea of why I liken it to a journey is because of the idea that this journey in particular, this journey of recovery, um, realistically has no no destination at an end uh, it has no time frame either um, I'm not 100% sure even now as, as a peer when things are really good and I'm I'm really um, content and, and quite like leveled that I know when this journey is going to finish I, I know how it's going to end up for me I guess um, it's the idea of being accepting that there's a lot of twists and turns and ups and downs along this journey and, and this road to recovery um, but I think for me, certainly, and it can be different for everyone, obviously, we fully understand that and we do appreciate that. Um, for me, once I accepted that and sort of was aware that I, I kind of sometimes need the bad days in order to appreciate the good days and, and to be able to look back and appreciate the the growth and the progression I have made in terms of my recovery. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes someone also once told me before that sometimes 
the the journey and the process is just as beautiful as the destination. And I think sometimes we're all guilty of not not appreciating the process and the journey of of what we're doing and what effort we're putting in and the hard work to achieve that destination. Um, sometimes all all we're sort of focused on is the destination. So in regards to recovery. I I try my best to enjoy the journey and appreciate it for what it is um, and and working towards that end goal of the destination, of course. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, it can be a really difficult kind of idea to get your head around. And it's something we we look a lot further into in all of our sessions. But we just thought we'd include it here today to give a bit of an ethos of what we're working towards when you come to courses. Um, So, yeah, we're really hoping, um, you know, you'll develop that meaningful valued life with or without those symptoms that you're experiencing there yeah um, so we did a- just have um sorry hope sorry to jump in we did just have someone jump in the q a uh, an anonymous attendee saying that um it's a helpful definition as it's not being about fixed or it's not about being fixed sorry and it ties in with the journeys we are all on and i think that's absolutely spot on thank you for sending that into us yeah i think the it is the idea about not being fixed um or in response to that as well, realizing that maybe there's not much even that wrong. Although there might be times that it feels like it and things are really difficult and it, you know, it makes life just genuinely a little bit harder with all of the stuff we all may have going on. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, appreciating that. And and I think that was a very insightful point from whoever sent that in. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. And, and obviously, like we said at the start, please do guys chime in and get involved as much as you feel comfortable with. If you have any opinions, um, you know, you want to let us know any questions, any any um any experiences yourself or any worries potentially. Obviously, like you might be new students. Sorry, guys, I'm just putting my laptop on charge. Um, I'm still paying attention. Maybe it's like a worry you guys have as a new student. You know, how's it going to be when I rock up? Um, where can I find? You know, how can I find these sessions and things like that? Whatever it may be, um, please do let us know. Um, and me and Hope will be more than happy to answer your questions. So. Thank you. We're going to just move on now and talk about what happens um, when you attend. Okay, yeah. So what happens when I attend? So as you can see on the left hand side, we'll start with the left hand side in orange. The webinars are always one session. Um, So they can sometimes be a little bit longer than the hour we have booked in today. Obviously, that just depends on the course in general that you're doing. Um, But as you can see, we'll go into a little bit more depth here than we did at the start, just so everyone's fully aware of what they can expect when they do each one depending. So a webinar would have no camera or mic, but you can see us. So hopefully if it's all working tech wise, well, you should be able to see myself and hope. Um, next, you can ask questions and contribute via the Q&A function. Um, and again, like we alluded to at the start, you can be anonymous. So there is a little settings box. Um, it's either in the bottom left or there's a little cog at the top right that you can click. Mm-hmm. You can make sure you're anonymous on that. And um that way you can send in questions, feedback, experiences of your own, anything like that. And your name won't be attached to it as well, which is obviously really appealing to some people. And we completely understand why. Uh, next up, we've got the courses. So these will be the what we call Zoom classroom, just to specify between the two. But it will be v- via Zoom. Um, you'll have the option to have your camera and microphone on. Um, and if you do, we can all see each other. So obviously, you'll still be able to see myself and Hope. Um in the context of if it was like today's session. Um, you can ask questions and contribute in the chat. So in a normal Zoom session, um, we don't have the Q&A function. It would just be the chat. So we use the chat to um, co- have like converse with each other. We can share feedback and opinions and things. Certainly if your microphone isn't on, you can communicate with us via that. Um, there's an opportunity to speak to myself or Hope privately if that was needed at all. Um, and also, it's a really good way for myself or Hope to to put any um, handouts or any links or anything like that from particular slides and stuff that you may have liked or appealed to you that you want to use outside of the session. So that's a really good benefit of that. Um, we have breakout rooms as well for smaller tasks. So depending on the course itself um, and the topping stuff, we do like to break up the learning styles in which we have. So, you know, you have what's called a passive, a more passive style of learning and a more active style of learning. So we don't just like to have it more webinar based. Obviously with a webinar, we can only do as much as we can do. So, you know, a lot more group discussion and asking for feedback and, and things like that. Whereas within a Zoom session, we might use breakout rooms. So say there was 10 students into the session, we might break you up into 
two groups of five and, and set you a nice independent task of trying to break down a question we pose or or um, something like that. Um, and then we leave you guys in there free, freely um, or you can ask us for help and we can pop in and out. Um, and then, yeah, we'll bring you back to the room after a certain amount of time, whether that's five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it may be. Um, and then we have an opportunity to feed back to the group and things. So that's a really nice way to sort of break up the learning styles. And you usually find, don't you hope that it's, um, mm -hmm. it's nice for students because you'll, you'll condense the numbers a little bit. Um, and it gives everyone an opportunity to, to work with different people, to, yeah. to speak a little Let's bit. More, feel a little, more. Yeah. Feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then last two, we've got um, reactions and the raise hand feature. So obviously, like we said, we don't really need the raise hand feature or the reactions within a webinar because we can't actually see anyone, but in a normal zoom session, it's quite nice to um, obviously use the raise hand feature to get our attention to, to mm -hmm. speak. So it's, it's like the, um, it's like the online version of putting your hand up in a classroom, basically. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can be facilitating and we can have 15, 20 students or something mm -hmm. on. And it's impossible for me to see everyone on my screen at one time. So someone could have their hand up like this um, and I could not actually see you on there. So by using the raise hand function, um, you'd come to the top of my screen just below myself. So I'd see you straight away. And as soon as I did, you know, we could we could pass to you and see what you wanted to say or whether you had an answer to a question, whatever. Um and in reactions as well is just a nice way to let other people know that what they've shared you agree with. Um, you know, you, you've got like the clapping hands or love hearts and smiles and things like that. So that's a really nice one to let people know you appreciate what they've said and what they've shared. And then lastly, just in between tasks on some courses we have where we have um, we don't call it homework, do we hope we have what's called <laughs> no. in between tasks. So some independent stuff we, we can um, sometimes ask you to get on with in between sessions um, and have it ready for when we next meet up for the next session of the week. Um, and that can be a really nice one because you can be keeping up to date with the topic of what we're doing material wise and things, but in between sessions. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously there's no pressure on that. You can take your time to do it, only do as much as you feel comfortable doing and things like that. So as you can see on screen, there are a good number of differences. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there won't be for the time being, but in the future, once we um, kind of launch Discovery College fully um, with a whole big timetable, um, we will hopefully try and introduce some classroom courses. So that that will mean in person, um, but that really just depends on availability. So we're spread over Norfolk and Suffolk, so it's quite difficult to find a common ground to meet, but that is something that we're hoping to do as well. Um, so thank you for that, Jake. Um, I'm just gonna run through what a typical session will look like. So you know what to expect um, when you come to a course. So a lot of the stuff we've already kind of gone through today. So it's quite similar, um, but we will always have the first five minutes kind of doing introductions, seeing how everyone is, um, just easing into the session. Um, we always go through our group agreement every session, even if we're in a four week course, session four we'll still go through the group agreement just to remind everyone um what's expected of us what's expected of you um and we might refer to this throughout the sessions if we ever feel like someone's not um kind of adhering to the agreement and that's really yeah. just to make sure everyone feels safe um and um you know no know, knows what what to do essentially um we we'll always have our session hopes so this is kind of a few short, um, I guess, aims of what we hope you will take from each session that you attend. Um, and there, there's no pressure on these that you have to kind of achieve them or feel like you've got them. It's just kind of, um, I guess, what we what we want um, for you from the session. Yeah. Um, and we'll always ask what your hopes are for the session as well, depending on what topic it is. Um, we try and always do an icebreaker as well. Um, so that essentially is just normally a short little task or question. We go, we go around the session, um, around the group. Um, you can pass or participate, which is a very important rule to mention um, throughout anything we do in the courses. If we ever come to you and you do not feel like uh, kind of responding that day or you just don't know what to say, you can pass and that is absolutely fine. Um, so the icebreakers are usually quite fun though um, and they just help us get to know each other a little bit. Um, so they're, they're just a bit of fun. Um, 
well, obviously the bulk of the sessions is always going to be the content and that will always just depend what the session is. Um, and we will always make sure um, we do at least one or two breaks because we're aware our sessions um, when we do the courses can be quite long. So we are going to look at um, how we manage that in the future. Um, but currently, most of our courses are around two hours long. Um, in that time, I would aim to have at least two breaks. But of course, as we've said, throughout those times, you can always leave and come back um, if you need to do anything. Because um, we understand it's a long time to sit and concentrate. Um, so, yeah, that's essentially what you can expect in a session. And one thing as well that's hopefully um, kind of encouraging to hear is you will never be tested on any of the stuff that we're <laughs> we're kind of teaching you. Yeah. So it's not, although we're an education environment, we're called a college, there's no tests. It's literally just whatever you want to take from the sessions, whatever tasks you, you want to do or not. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's it's just about coming together to to chat about things and, and hopefully learn, learn some stuff as well. So um, hopefully that is reassuring. Um, and of course, there's always space for questions and comments throughout the sessions, if you're ever unsure. Uh, I don't think I've missed anything there, have I, Jake? No, no, I think that was perfect, yeah. Good, good. Amazing. So this, um, well, we've had a question here. Would it be OK to have support to attend a course um, if focus processing information or confidence is a possible barrier? Absolutely. So. I know I've said, um, you know, we want our courses to be 16 to 25, um, like age bracket. But of course, if you need support to attend a course, then that is fine. It's just making sure um, if you have got someone with you, let us know so we can let the group know. Because sometimes people um, might not feel necessarily as comfortable to share things. So then they'll just know who is actually um, listening to the course if the person's not um not visible for whatever reason um and that just helps everyone feel um feel contained and, and and know what's going on so that is absolutely fine though because we understand that can be a real help um so yeah absolutely thank you for that and just to give you a bit of an insight into what is coming up because there's not been loads of information um out there just yet i've put together um the calendar for the first term of discovery college so you can see a bit of a timeline of what's been going on and what we're going to do so um this all really started in august um where we've been looking at gathering people for focus groups and developing our courses for the first term um so We've come on to September where we've got this webinar today. This is the only bit we've got on during September um, at the moment. And we're hoping to put on a focus group towards the end of September as well, just to look at, um, you know, the the courses we've already got coming up um, and um, what, what kind of things um, we need help with. And then in October, we have our first course running, and that is with my myself and Jake, um, exploring and understanding identity, which, um, you know, is a really popular course at Recovery College. It's one we've picked because we think um, it will be really helpful for this age group. Um, and um, it's three sessions long as well. I believe that is starting on the 2nd of October. Um, they're about two, two and a half hour sessions. So it is quite long. Um, but of course, we will have our breaks and things like that. And you'll get to know each other quite well over the free sessions. So if um if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then please do sign up. All of the information is on our website um, and the timetable is on there with them on. Um, if you're ever looking for a Discovery College course specifically, um, it will say Discovery College 16 to 25 and then the name of the course. Um, so just to differentiate, because we do have Exploring and Understanding Identity at Recovery College as well. And that would be an open course to all age groups. Um, you are absolutely more than welcome to join whichever ones you want. 
as we're in our first term. This is a very limited selection of courses we have to offer. And that's just so we can trial them um, before we know what ones to add and what, one, what ones need changing. Um, so in the meantime, if you feel brave, you can absolutely go to the Recovery College courses um, just to get a bit more um a bit a bit more topics um if we haven't necessarily put them on this term um we also have in october our understanding and managing anxiety webinar so same as today no mics or cameras um just q a kind of function and that is a bit of an basically an introduction to the course we're running which is two sessions long in november uh, and that will be with myself and danny um we also have a new course, which is to be confirmed. So we are still um, developing it, but it is almost there. Uh, we have named it A Guide to Living Your Best Life. Um, it's three sessions long and essentially we're hoping will be um, an introduction to starting your recovery. All the stuff you need to know um, for this journey you're embarking on with coming to Discovery College, um, and hopefully going on to any other courses, it will just be a really nice basis um, for you to then build on um, all the knowledge you gain from it. So um, I really recommend that. Um, keep an eye on our calendar because it's not it's not currently on there, but we're really hoping it will be this term. Um, and that is a brand new course. So that is not on Recovery College um, as well. Um, and also in November, we have our Recovery College 10 year anniversary celebration. So um, if if that is something you'd be interested in coming to, we're having lots of amazing talks um, from, from different speakers. We're having taster sessions for courses um, and um, a few kind of talks from our staff members as well. Um, and I believe Jake is speaking at that as well, giving some lived I, experience. Apparently so, yeah. I think <laughs> I think foolishly I put my name down to do that because no one else, um, everyone else seemed slightly re uh, reluctant to do so. <laughs> um, yeah, like absolutely. A couple hundred people there. I, I think I'm a little bit reluctant to do it as well. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Appreciate you reminding me about that, Hope. Thank that's you. That's okay. Much. Yeah, if anyone wanted to attend that, it's a great chance to meet our entire team, um, get a taster of sessions, hear some great talks, all mental health related. There's going to be stalls there from various organisations um, within uh, kind of Norfolk and Suffolk as well, all to do with wellbeing. Um, so you can um, get tickets for that online as well, all on our website if you want to look into that. Um, and then lastly, in December, we are off term time um, table. So that means there's no courses being run in December. Um, but that is where we'll be having more focus groups to look at our second term of courses. So what ones are going to be added to the timetable? Um, and doing, being out and about, doing some stalls and promotions. So you might see us about if you're at any kind of mental health, um, I guess, based uh, events or things like that will hopefully be there. Um, so that's just a bit of an overview of this term um, and what's been going on really. Um, hopefully that's been helpful. If anyone has questions, do let me know. Um, but all of this information really should, should be on our website as well, um, if you're unsure. Lovely. So we have come on to the, the time in our session uh, where we have a few minutes just for questions. Um, if there's anything we haven't covered in this session that you're still unsure about or want to know, um, any worries about attending courses or things like that, um, just let us know in the Q&A function and we'll, we'll kind of answer them. Um, I guess I'm wondering, Jake, um, just if people are kind of typing in there, um, if if you have any advice for anyone feeling anxious about attending courses or anything like that. Yeah, so obviously, like Hope said, we've got a couple of minutes, guys. Um, so please do fire some questions in, any concerns, anything like that you may have. And, you know, myself and Hope will do our absolute best to answer those. Um, in regards to the anxiety one, that's um that's that's a big one because that was that was my biggest thing I can remember going back to the I could still remember it now so vividly like the first session I had this is this was in the classroom bearing in mind though so mm -hmm. maybe it's a little bit more anxiety provoking because obviously you're not in the comfort of your own house or 
um, you know, behind the laptop screen um, or whatever. And I can remember being so anxious of, you know, being, I guess, just out of my comfort zone a little bit or or the fear of not knowing what to expect. Um, but honestly, the the first step, guys, is always the most difficult one. That's what I truly believe. And the idea of putting yourself out there and, and attending sessions, whether it's online or webinar, Zoom, whether it's a classroom eventually when, when we get to that point and, and like we do offer at Recovery College, um, it's it's a hard one to answer because anxiety I can relate to better than anyone because I still experience anxiety myself. Um, I can understand how it it can kind of try and hold us back. The easiest thing to do when when we're anxious is to stay within our comfort zone and to to do what we know um, won't provoke that anxiety even more. But honestly, the whether it's recovery college or whether it's the new discovery college we've just started that the, the the environment itself is just so laid back and non-judgmental and mm. everyone there is so aware that you're all you're all in a similar position regardless of timing or whatever it might be on your recovery journey itself just a similar position that you're wanting to better yourself and you're wanting to grow and develop te new techniques that will to potentially help you manage things and stuff you know and and everyone is aware of that and and honestly i've i've met some am amazing amazing people in my time here whether it's been as as a working here or as a student um mm. whatever it may be and, and and usually you know as well um you know like i always like to say when i'm tutoring with people because it, it does clear the air and it makes people feel a bit better like i'm i'm in the role i'm in okay um I, i'm still anxious as well before i i do this you know and this is i do this most days um so you know, it's nice to understand that you're not only going to be the only person anxious there. You're not going to be the only person who's been, you know, like having thoughts and potentially catastrophizing or, or yeah. you know, just like working, working things out for themselves. You know, everyone's going to be different in regards to how that looks. But mm. honestly, yeah, you know, I'm I'm still anxious half the time myself. <laughs> I was anxious before we started this, guys. So please don't don't We're worry. We're all human. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we've got a question coming. Um, what would being in a focus group involve? So I'll pass that one to you, Hope. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So um, our our focus groups, um, because Discovery College is so new, we want to put them on um, to essentially um, meet very likely online because people will be from all across Norfolk and Suffolk um, won't be big groups um, probably maximum like four or five people at a time um, just coming together to talk about um, you know what courses they've been on if they have um, if not just looking over different activities we have planned in our courses just to give us feedback on whether they're a good activity what you would change about them um, if there's anything you um couldn't access about the core about the activity um we we really want to get input on creativity so you know we've had some design on the slides today and things like that do you like that um all of our leaflets and promotional um stuff that we make um we'd love input from you all on that as well um what could be changed about it what do we prefer um colors things like that we're still developing our logo as well um so we need we need to pick some colors and things for that um so yeah re really relaxed um just meeting online a small group of us um just to to chat about different things that um that we've made or are in the process of making yeah just getting some opinions and things yeah. like that and you guys as students your opinion is extremely valued you know obviously yeah, yeah. the the opinion of you as as a student and and you know what what you like what you you might not like what may might make things easier for you or, or more mm -hmm. you know easier to digest information and things like that you know we really would appreciate that because at the end of the day it's going to better benefit yourselves and other students um, in terms of your learning capabilities and how much you enjoy the sessions and how comfortable you feel and things like that so we do really really enjoy that um, and I just got a reply anxiety can be hard so thank you for that Jake you're more than welcome um, absolutely more than welcome you know I I myself and hope and everyone within the team of, of obviously what we we do what we do for, for a reason um, we're all pretty nice people you know um, we're all aware of how it feels to have anxiety or different struggles and things like that you know um mm -hmm. we all have our own experiences and things and we know just how tough it can be really um and you know we're we're here to 
to try our best to help and inspire others along their own recovery journey and and share our opinions and our experiences and things like that so you're absolutely welcome anytime <laughs> couldn't feel it any better myself jake thank you you're welcome. um we're just coming to the end of our session um and just up on the screen here i've just popped some qr codes um so you can scan them with the camera on your phone um if that is if you're not on a phone i am going to also put the links into the chat function which you yeah. can click on and if um, you, you click those links in the chat guys it will open up a new tab but it won't close this tab down so by all means do it while we're in the session now and then when we close down this webinar um the tab will still be up for the feedback form so again all that is is just so you can let us know what you thought of the session um how are we good bad anything we can do to improve what did you like um you know just things like that um it only take a couple of minutes to fill out so please do if you wouldn't mind um do that um and then you've got another bit of feedback hope saying um the focus group sounds good thank you hope um wow. awesome, yeah. so like we said we've got a date for that you there. Yeah. keep your um, eyes peeled we would love to have you there and we'd love to have your input and stuff like that so if that's something that suit um you know you you like the idea of or you know think suitable for you by all means please come and join us we'd love it um and then someone just said, thank you both. Great welcome session. You are absolutely welcome. Thank you. And thank you for your input. Um, and, you know, hopefully we've we've helped you, um, we've helped set the tone for you, sorry. So, you know, hopefully this is something that appeals to you. You feel a lot more comfortable about potentially attending sessions and things like that. So if that is the case, hopefully we have done our job today and <laughs> we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Great. We're going to end the webinar there and we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your week.